devotees to Jenkins opened the sale of books and kept them on the bookshelf in the living room. But then the family got busy with their daily routines, not caring to open and read the Srimad Bhagavatam. Mr. Jenkins' son, Dan, used to lie down on the carpet in the living room, taking drugs almost every day, and would stare at the bookshelf. One day Dan overdosed on drugs and went into a coma and was rushed to hospital. Mrs. Jenkins, I'm afraid your son's condition is very critical at the moment, and therefore it's hard to comment on anything. We're going to keep evaluating, and within the next seven days we should know if he can come back from this coma or not. I, un I understand, Mr. Jenkins, Mr. Jenkins, I really do. I'm going to try my best, but certain things are not in our control. Your son is now out of the coma. However, his condition is still critical. He's been asking us a question that we can't answer. Something about a blue boy? that's prominent in his memory. Do you know what this could be about? Is he talking about that, um, the set of books which those uh, volunteers brought to our house a few weeks ago um, on the, the cover of the first book? On, on the front there is a picture of a, a blue cowherd boy. Hmm. Mrs. Jenkins, would you be able to bring that book? If this image has stayed with him, even when his body was at its lowest, it may aid further in his recovery process. I'll go home right now and get it. After a few days, Dan was discharged from hospital and he asked to be taken to the temple so he could meet someone who could explain more about the book. He was still very weak and was unable to read the book himself. However, 
Mr. Jenkins invited those same devotees to tell them about the book. Dan, Dan, my name is Radhisham Das. I gave this set of Shuma Bhagavatam to your parents three weeks ago. Within the Shuma Bhagavatam, Lord Krishna gave the perfect example of how one should spend one's last seven days on this earth. He gave the example of Maj Parikshit, grandson of the Pandavas. One day, whilst out hunting, as many Shachya kings did during that time, Maj Parikshit became thirsty and tired. Whilst looking for water, he came across the hermitage of the great sage, Shamik. Great sage, my name is Maharaj Parikshit, and I am the emperor of this whole world, and I'm begging you for some water. I'm far away from my palace. Please, please give me something to drink. But the sage, deep in meditation, was oblivious to the king's request. Sage, something happened to your ears. Sage, I'm talking to you. Give me some water as I am your king. The king became furious at being ignored. That's it. Sage, last time I'm telling you, give me some water. The king, feeling his importance was being neglected, decided to take the body of a dead snake and garland the sage with it as a response. Sage, this garland is for your hospitality. Shringi, the young son of the sage Shamik, was playing with his friends when he heard about the incident with the king. Upon hearing this, he became furious. Taking some holy water from the river Koshiki, he cursed the king. Within the seven days, the poisonous snake, Takshuk, will bite the man who has insulted my father in this way. The dust killing him. Ah! Thus the king was cursed to die within seven days. But the king took this as a blessing. He ridded himself of all his riches and gave his kingdom away to his young son Janmajaya. He then became a mendicant, going to the banks of the Ganga to meditate and fast until the curse was to take effect. The news spread far and wide and many great sages along with their disciples gathered to where the king was meditating. The king was grateful to see all the holy men and bowed down in respect to them. The king then asked the sages. Great sages, my name is Maharaj Parikshit and I was cursed by the Brahman boy. I'm about to die and leave this world in seven days. Kindly bestow your benedictions and your blessings in the transcendent instructions. Please consider this. Sukadev Goswami, the son of Yasadev, responded. My dear King Parikshit, the question you have asked is so glorious and is beneficial for everyone. The answer to this question is the prime subject of life and approved by all the transcendentalists. At the time of death, one should be bold enough and not to be scared of it. One must cut all the attachment to the material body and everything pertaining to it, including desires. At that time, if someone wants to come out of all the material problems, the insurmountable ocean of all the miseries of life, one must develop the transcendental taste in the narration of the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. One must absorb in the name and form pastimes of that Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. That is the goal of life. The king then listened to the sage's instructions for seven days until the curse was to take effect. 
After the seven days, he thanked the great sage for his merciful instructions. All great sages, thank you for your benedictions and blessings. The king then settled his mind into his spiritual self. He became as stationary as a tree. As the seven days passed, the snake bird, Dakshak, approached the king while he was deep in meditation. The bird, snake bird then bit the king and he left his body. He immersed in the absolute truth of the Supreme Being and felt no pain as he left for the spiritual world. After hearing about the Srimad Bhagavatam, Dan, Dan made a full recovery and became an active devotee. But ladies and gentlemen, this isn't just a story, this really happened. This shows the importance of the Srimad Bhagavatam in one's home. Thank you for your kind attention. I hope you consider hearing about the pastimes of the Srimad Bhagavatam yourself. Shri Krishna Jamasami Ki! Shri Krishna Jamasami Ki! Shri Krishna Jamasami Ki! Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna!